refined. And we know where our shadow shapes are, but everything is looking a little flat. So now is when we want to start adding in some shading, coloring in those shadow shapes with our pencil. I'm going to teach you some basic application techniques to darken tone and create texture. And I'm going to show you how to mass in a simple shadow shape and make it even. And we're going to use hatching and cross hatching techniques to create texture and dimension on the leaf. We're going to create dimension on our leaf by adding some shading and some tone. When I talk about shading, I mean adding darker tone uh, with the, my pencil to the paper. When I say tone, I mean the lightness or darkness of the shade. I'm going to start by coloring in the shadow tone. So we blocked in lightly just the, um, where the shadow shape would go. And you see I never really made any strong line for the contour. That's because with the shadow shape, I want it to have a certain softness. I'm going to start adding tone by shading with my pencil quickly back and forth. I'm trying not to make a sharp mark with my pencil. Let me show you what I mean. I don't want to make a hard, sharp line with my pencil making dark marks. I'm kind of using my pencil a little bit on the side and going back and forth quickly to make a more even tone. So that's how I'm going to start laying in some of the shapes for the shadow. I'm going to go around this way and start to do this big passage and then I can show you how to make it nice and even. It's hard when you're first laying in the tone because you can't necessarily make your pencil mark go for the whole shape, right? It's a little too big. So my pencil more naturally just goes back and forth for, you know, like about an inch. So then I have to layer it over in order to get it even. But I have a couple other techniques that I use to make it nice and even as well. So first pass is just going with the pencil, a little bit on the side, zigzagging back and forth. Once I've done that first pass, then I'm actually going to use our blending stump. And how this works is this doesn't actually have any tone. It's a soft, uh, almost velvety feeling roll of paper that's really good for blending and rubbing. And so right where I was making the tone with my pencil, I'm going to go over it again, just going in the same direction and smoothing it out. And you see how it gets even a little darker too. So I don't feel like I have to make the tone in my shadow even and blend it all at once. I'm going to do it gradually. Go back, do that little section over there. I'll do this one up here. And I'm not worrying too much about the line here. I'll clean that up later if I need to. And the other thing that you'll notice is that um, at the edges of my shadow, I'm not really making it with a hard line. I like to use that hard line on the contour here where it's the leaf overlapping the background. But for the shadow shape, I like it to have a nice soft edge because it really looks a lot more like light and shadow on the wall when it has a soft edge like that. And I want to have that contrast between the hard edge for the contour of the leaf here and then a soft edge for the edge of the shadow here. I'm going to keep going and mass in the rest of the tone for the leaf. I'm going to darken down that tone again blending with a stump, trying to make the whole shadow shape nice and even. Keep the value of it, the, the tone of it, it's all this, about the same darkness. It 
If I need to, I can build up the tone gradually. So if, if it's not dark enough, you can just go over the tone again with your pencil. So don't feel like you need to build up the value all at once. You can just do it one direction, blend a little bit, and then go over it again. And let me show you one other thing that's really useful for trying to make that tone nice and even, which is that you can use your kneaded eraser almost like a little, uh, a, almost like a drawing tool itself by going in there. And if there's a little spot that's gotten a little too dark and isn't even, then you can use that to just pull it out and make the tone nice and regular. So um, you can be a little bit patient and layer up the layers of tone gradually using your blender and your pencil and your kneaded eraser and then uh, building up a tone that's nice and even. Another thing that I can use my kneaded eraser for is as I went along the edges of my shadow, I didn't really um, make a very sharp contour. But if I want to refine the shape of it, then I can just use my kneaded eraser, almost like a drawing tool, and shape the cast shadow edge. And it looks a little more naturalistic to do it this way than if I had tried to just use my pencil and make an outline. So I'm going to finish putting in a little bit of tone up here for this cast shadow on this stem and the nail. I like the way the nail sticks out from the wall and it makes a little bit of feeling of dimension on my drawing. So I want to include that little piece of shadow up there. If I need to change the shape a little bit, I'll use my kneaded eraser to correct the drawing there. I want the tone to be kind of smooth and even. And it's easy to use my eraser to pull things out if I feel like I've gotten it in the wrong place. So with the shadow shapes like this, I can really just do it kind of um, in a loose, open, sketchy way and don't feel like I have to be real precise with it. I like it when it has that little bit of a feathery edge. I'm kind of just using my pencil a little bit more scribbly right there just to kind of make it look softer over on that edge right there. And so there's just a little bit of shadow shape that makes it look dimensional, like it's sticking up off the paper there. So now that I've masked in a simple shadow shape, starting to add some dimension to my drawing, make it look like there's a cast shadow and my leaf is popping off the page. And now I'm really ready to add all of the details to the inside of the leaf. A drawing is really beautiful when it shows an overarching unity and an understanding of how to organize things from large to small. And these organizing skills are fundamental for tackling any drawing because you have to figure out how to proceed in your drawing from the unified whole to the small details all in the right place. A leaf, a tree, a landscape, a still life. You want a system that helps you build from the simple to the complex as you continue to master your skills. So now we're really ready to start building the complex shapes on the inside of the leaf to add some real detail to our drawing. The first thing that I want to add is some of the vein lines that describe the inside shapes in the leaf. And it's also going to help us map out where I want to put the hatching and cross hatching and shape for the inside of the leaf. So I've started a little bit the, to block in this central vein. But now I'm going to, thinking a little bit more in contour line mode, just going to redraw that vein line. I don't want to make the vein lines on the inside of the leaf as dark and dramatic as I did the lines on the outside of the leaf. The vein lines are a detail and they're not as important as the outer contour. And if I make those lines really bold and dark on the inside, it's going to break up the feeling of the surface of the leaf. So I'm going to use a light and delicate line where I want to add the veins. 
I started from the center, and then I'm just kind of looking at each lobe. So now I'm down at this three lobes at the bottom, and I'm looking from point to point, seeing, okay, there's a vein that goes right up the middle there, and then looking to see how it connects and where it connects to the central leaf, central vein of the leaf right there, and just marking it in lightly. One thing I'm really trying to pay attention to is how the places where the leaf lines meet up in the middle, how they're a little staggered. So up here, for example, there's this vein that comes down and touches that edge that we looked at before. And there's a vein on the other side, but I'm really noticing how the vein line, it doesn't start in the exact same place, it starts a little bit higher. So when I pay attention to that irregularity, it's going to help me make a leaf that seems naturalistic and organic. I'm not going to worry about putting in every single vein. I'm kind of just looking to see which ones seem the most important. And so I'm looking at all the ones that kind of go right down the center of these lobes. And I'm looking to see how this connects from here, up here, along here to here. And building that line lightly, I'm not trying to put it in too dark, but building it in segments to make sure that it connects. And then I think I'll add one more up here. And then one more on this side. And that one, it actually looks like they do actually touch very close right there. So when I pay attention to how close or far apart they are, it helps me get the intervals all right. So I'm just going to add a few more of these small ones. I like how these little veins go out to the, to the little points on the lobe. Add a few more of those. I think that'll make it look a little more detailed and natural. So you see how I've started with the center line, then I followed out the major veins, and now I'm adding just a couple, and not all, of the little ones, because that makes it just a little bit more um, like realistically detailed. So I'm just adding a few more of those. And again, just sketching them in just really lightly with a pencil, not making a dark mark. And now that I have those vein lines in place, it's really going to help me um, as we're ready to start laying in some hatching and some shading to kind of give the leaf some dimension. So let me show you how I want to do that. As we start developing the tones on the inside, I'm going to start using a technique called hatching and cross-hatching. With hatching and cross-hatching, what you're doing is you're making a series of regular lines. And let me show you over here, where the lines all go in one direction to make a hatch line. And then cross-hatching is when you want to make it darker, then you go over those lines again, but in a little bit different direction. Now, I'm right-handed. So it's really natural for my hand to make lines like in this direction, in this direction, maybe over to here. But actually, once I get here, you can see I can't make hatch lines this way. So you're going to find, and I encourage you to just practice with your pencil, feeling what is comfortable in your hand, that you'll find a certain range of motion that you can make with your hand naturally. Left-handed one direction, right-handed the other direction. So that's how I make hatching lines. And when I want to make the tar tone darker, I just layer them up. The thing that's nice about hatching line is that you can also start to add a little bit of dimension with the hatching if you gently curve them. So let's look at a little place on our leaf. When I'm thinking about hatching on my leaf, the first thing I'm going to look for is the places that are visually lighter or darker on my leaf. 
So I'm looking and I'm noticing that there's this passage right down here on my leaf where it's kind of all a little bit darker and similarly a little bit down here. So I want to use that pattern of light and dark to help me organize where I'm going to put my hatching. So I'm going to start up over here. So first I'm going to make a light hatch just going all the way across that darker area. The edges of that tone, it doesn't have any hard edges. So the hatching works well for that because I can just kind of lighten up on my pencil as I get to the edge, make the line a little lighter or layer it a little bit more if I want it to get darker. And so that's why the hatching works nicely. But the other thing that I can do with the hatching is that I can start to curve the lines a little bit and that also helps make the dimension. So let's look right here. I was hatching in one direction and now I want to show the dimension of the leaf that's kind of curving a little bit gently this way. So what I'm going to try to do is actually make all of my hatch lines kind of gently go in that direction. You have to have a fair amount of control to get your hatch lines to go in that direction and to make it even. So don't worry, uh, it's going to take you a little bit of practice to learn how to make the lines parallel and to get them regular. So the more you just, you know, practice um, and repeat, doodling, making a few extra little lines, just repeat that process, practice, um, you'll find it gets easier and easier. So I'm using those cross hatching lines, trying to make them a little bit curved, and that helps create a feeling of the roundness in the leaf right there. And so you see every time I'm putting a little bit more pencil, a little bit more hatching, it gets a little bit darker. So that's how I will use the hatching and the cross hatching to develop some of the tones in the leaf and make it feel like it's rippling a little bit in the surface. Another thing I'm going to kind of look for to add some dimension is, you remember I, I like that little piece that flips forward and it has a little cast shadow. So I'm going to make sure I put that in too, because that really is going to help make the leaf look dimensional. And I'm going to go all the way across. I like how it gets a little darker right there. And it's sort of darker at the edge that it's kind of curling just a little bit that way. So I'm just adding a little bit of hatching tone wherever I'm seeing the surface of the leaf kind of get lighter or darker or ripple in one direction or another. Um, here, going across here, I'm just going to add some light lines. I'm not doing it quite as dark as I did in this area where I wanted to make it darker, but just enough to add a little bit of feeling of the shape of the leaf as it curves gently right there. Here, at this little lobe, there's kind of a nice little way where the leaf flips out at the end. So I'm going to make that little part darker. Making kind of an even tone. And right here at the vein line, it's kind of darker under the vein and a little lighter above. So I'll make that whole thing a little darker. And I want this part right here to transition evenly. So I'm just adding a little more hatching at the edge there. So by adding kind of just a little bit darker right at the little points 
a little darker there. It's kind of making that edge feel like it's curling up and like it has some texture to it. Similarly, right down here at the bottom, I like how it gets dark right there. So make that point dark. And right here where that vein is down that darker passage, I'm going to make the line for the vein just a little bit darker right there. So you can see that I'm organizing my hatching around the lighter areas and the darker areas. I'm looking with the, at the pattern of life and light and dark on the leaf to see what jumps out, jumps out at me as being a dark part and using that as the place to start with my hatching. And then I'm just going to build up the texture gradually, kind of starting with the darker areas, then moving into the lighter ones and gradually building up the tone. So now that I've added some hatching all over the leaf and given it a little texture, the one thing I want to check on before I've kind of finished this part of the drawing up is as I've added the texture, has it gotten a little too all over with the hatching and I've lost a little bit of the simple pattern of light and dark. So having added some texture all over, now one more time I just kind of want to look at what are the places that I want to have as the darker details and is there anything I need to lighten up to make it clear, clean and clear. So right here I like the way that dark shadow shape goes across. 
So I'm just using my blending tool, which is going to smooth it out and make it a little more regular right there. I'm not going to use this blender all over. I'm only using it just in the few spots that I want to make sure I have kind of simple, even, dark area. The blender is a good tool for making things kind of even and unified, but if you use it all over, it gets a little smeary looking. So I'm just using that there. Right here, there's another little passage where the light kind of ripples across. And I want to have that feeling of the rippling across there because it kind of shows how there's this undulating surface to the leaf. So I'm just going to use this a little bit right here. And then maybe layer up one more time, darkening down right here. And then the other thing that I can do to kind of make sure that it stays unified is I can use my kneaded eraser like a drawing tool and almost doing the hatching by erasing out with the kneaded eraser. So I'm making the same kind of marks, same directional parallel marks that I did with my pencil, but this time just pulling it out with my eraser. And that way I can make a nice unified pattern of light and dark. Also, it's nice to know you can use your kneaded eraser this way because as you're learning how to hatch and build up the tone, if you find that it gets too dark or you want to change it, you can always just push the tone back and forth using your pencil in one hand and the kneaded eraser to pull it back out if you need to. So pulling that back out, and then maybe there's a couple places where it's gotten a little smeary, and I want it to be nice and clean. So I'm going to use my kneaded eraser to pull out a few spots where it's gotten a little smudged. OK. So now I've added those hatching and cross-hatching tones. And the last thing I want to do is I want to clean up my contour now that I've been adding tone and kind of going over it. So I'm going to clean up the edges one more time. So for example, right here, I laid in my shadow, but I didn't really get it right to the edge. And um, so I'm gonna, let me show you how to fix that. Now I'm going to go in a little bit more carefully. At first I was kind of going broadly, scribbling back and forth. Now I'm going to go in a little bit more precisely and go right along that contour. And I'm even going to redraw that contour, make it nice and dark. Because since I've added the tone, now I can make a little bit darker line for a little clarity right there. And then using my pencil with a little bit more precision in the point and getting the hatching right in there so that I can get it precisely right to that line. So don't feel like you need, when you're first laying in your shadow shape, that you have to make that edge perfect. It's actually a lot better to kind of do it broadly, get it in nice and even, and then at the very end, clean up the edges. So same thing here, just going to make that a little more unified. I'm going to kind of redraw that contour. And then like right here, for example, the tone kind of got across it a little bit. So I'm just going to use my kneaded eraser and make it nice and sharp. So when cleaning up these lines, I kind of will do it one place at a time, sharpening up the contour, making it a little bit darker in some places, and then using my kneaded eraser to pull it up and make it nice and clean. So the thing I hope you are noticing is that 
this line that I'm ending up with in my finished drawing isn't actually what I originally started with, and it was never perfect in the first place. I've actually kind of used these techniques to craft that line and then used my eraser and my blender carefully to make it look like I drew it right and perfectly in the first place. Now just carefully adding some hatching right at the edge so that it's nice and clean there. But it's better to kind of work a little bit more broadly and all over and then clean up the detail later. Right here, I want to make this part of the leaf feel like it's snapping forward off of this page a little bit. And so there's two things I can do to help that. For one thing, I can make the shadow give a little bit more contrast right at the edge and make that a little sharper right there. And just by making a real clean separation of the tone, of the tone of the shadow here and then the leaf here, it's starting to separate. So that's the first thing I can do. And then the next thing that I can do is I can add a little bit more variety and a little detail to that edge. If I look in really carefully, I actually see that there's some little tiny kind of like hooks and little uneven parts. And if I just use my pencil to kind of suggest them, looking carefully about where they are, and then add like a little tiny notch maybe a little wiggle and make this hard clear graphic line. It gives the edge of the leaf this greater feeling of texture and it makes this part of the leaf pop off the background. So that's a great technique for adding a little bit of graphic detail and feeling of, of um, the contrasting edge to your picture. And do the same thing right here, kind of make it pop forward. So you can see I'm just darkening down behind a little bit, adding a little bit more um, contrast right at the edge. Oh, and if I, if I accidentally go over it, then I'll just use my kneaded eraser and pull it out. Same up here to shape a nice clean line. When you're doing all of the little details, it really helps to look at the whole leaf and be a little thoughtful about where you might want a little bright, jagged edge, a little bit of a dramatic dark accent, and pick two or three or four spots on your leaf where you're going to add s some of that kind of graphic detail. And don't necessarily use the same technique all over every inch of the edge. That's going to give the edge more variety and it's going to give it a little bit more aesthetic sensibility of, of um, graphic detail with some things that are really sharp and crisp and other things that are a little softer. So as you're going around thinking about adding some of these sharp details, don't try and do it everywhere. Pick a few really um, points of interest and put them there. But I really like here, this part of the leaf, where it's coming up off of the paper a little bit farther. Then that's a nice place for those dark accents because it makes it have more of a sense of depth between the contrasting leaf coming forward and then the shadow shape in the background behind. Now, to finish up my drawing, the only thing I want to finish up is this stem and nail up at the top. So up here at the top, 
I don't have to do too much more up here. I already drew this stem. I'm just going to color in this and add a nice simple round circle so that it kind of has this um, graphic geometric shape that makes it pop forward. I'm going to add a little bit more crisp contour to this little piece of stem sticking up. And I'm going to darken down this little branch here. Just zigzagging my little hatching kind of densely, darkening down that little passage. Not worrying too much about coloring inside or outside the lines. It's okay if I go outside the lines. Darting it down. I'm going to use my stump just to unify that, and then I'll show you how to clean it up. So you see the first stage is I'm just making it even and dark. I'm going to use my stump to blend the shadow shape a little bit too and kind of feather it out. So feathering it out, just kind of softly making a blended edge where it gets lighter and lighter. Let's see, I want that little cast shadow of the nail. It's also kind of rounded. Try not to make that too dark. And then one more time up on the branch, if I just add a little bit more contour, then it's going to make that branch look like it's kind of popping off the page. And I can just kind of add a few little knobs and notches. And suddenly it makes a little bit of feeling of the texture of that branch. So I wasn't really worried about where all those little knobs were earlier. I'm just going to add that little detail in as I color it in. And I can just kind of suggest it. All right, so I've made those darker, and that kind of makes, kind of balances out the sharpness of the leaf down here by having this detail up here. And I've got my cast shadow of the nail and the branch that makes it look like it's um, popping up off the wall. Now, I the last thing I want to do is that I want to clean up around here and here and some other little places with my kneaded eraser just to um, clean up the page and make it look nice and finished. So I'm just going to go around with my kneaded eraser, pull out any kind of like extra little marks that I needed to kind of guide myself, but now I don't need them anymore. So erasing out these extra marks and little smudges is part of how we make this drawing look like you drew it all at once really simply. But really now you see that I created this whole block in and map underneath so that I could end up with a drawing that has this much detail. So now I'm going to erase out all the little places that I needed to map out my picture. And I like to use the kneaded eraser here because I can keep the edges, especially where the shadow, I want that shadow edge nice and soft. And the kneaded eraser really helps it um, have a nice soft edge. So you can see I'm just going around carefully in each area and removing the smudges cleaning up my page. If I wanted, I could spend more time along that shadow edge, shaping it a little bit as long as I didn't make it too much of a hard edge. When you're drawing, oftentimes your hand rests on the paper and it smears, especially for me being right-handed on this side. So for all these projects, you're going to want to make sure you take some time and clean up your page as you're finishing up.
And over here, some of my hatching lines kind of smeared over my contour. So again, I'll just clean it up, make it look nice and crisp. There we go. So now that I've cleaned up my page, I'm feeling like I'm about done with my project because I think I've gone around and considered all of the different contours, I've thought about the texture, and I think that I've brought all the different parts of my paper and drawing to about the same level of finish. So I'm really happy with how far I got with this project. 